With the next-gen Snapdragon chip on the horizon, how do Apple's and Google's latest CPUs perform against the current generation Qualcomm and MediaTek chipsets? Today, we'll be putting the latest iPhone up against its predecessor, as well as the latest Pixel, Samsung, and Xiaomi in four heavy-hitting benchmark tests, where we will test out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling, score, and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a lux meter. All of them were updated to their latest available software at the time of filming this video. All of their chips are manufactured by TSMC, except for the Pixel's Tensor G3, which is made by Samsung. The Tensor G3 is also the only 9-core CPU of the lot, but it has the lowest main core clock speed, while the A17 Pro CPU found inside the latest iPhone has the highest, and is the only chipset here running a 3 nanometer process node. The iPhones use LPDDR5 RAM modules and NVMe storage, while the Androids are kitted with LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage, though the Pixel sticks to UFS 3.1. All of them have 120Hz LTPO displays, except for the Xiaomi which has a 144Hz adaptive sync display. They have all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions, and all of them have been set to their respective high performance modes if available. Today we'll be running through the latest versions of Antutu, Geekbench 5, Geekbench 6 and 3DMark, and between each benchmark we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. Will the latest offerings from Apple and Google be enough to keep up with the competition. This is Tech Nick and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, we're going to be checking their battery percentages at the start of the test. They're not exactly the same, but we'll compare this at the end of the test again. We're going to be using an emissivity level of 0.5 on an infrared heat gun with a room temperature of about 23 degrees Celsius. Now, these temps are in relation to the phone standing idle for a few minutes now. And if you are interested, before the test is underway, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is the coolest and the Xiaomi 13T Pro is indeed the hottest while just chilling here on their displays. Now, Antutu version 10 is finally stable. No more betas over here. So the official stable versions have been downloaded and I am using them on all the iPhones and Android devices over here. Now I know what you guys are thinking, you can't really compare Androids and iPhones within Antutu, but with version 10, they are a lot more comparable in terms of CPU memory and user experience than ever before. Even though Android still uses OpenCL, GL and Vulkan, whereas iOS uses Metal API, so you can't exactly compare GPU, but we can't help to compare in terms of enthusiasts. At the end of the day, you're gonna wanna pick up an Android or an iPhone, so maybe this video will help you decide which one you wanna grab in terms of performance, raw performance that is, in terms of benchmark scores. Now in terms of raw performance, scores are scores, numbers and numbers and numbers don't lie. So the scores and numbers that you get within these benchmark tests are going to kind of show you exactly how well these phones compared to one another. Now, the thing that kind of skews people a little bit is the fact that some phones actually feel smoother even though they have lower benchmark scores compared to other devices on the daily and that is because of optimizations and AI which Google do incredibly well. So while Google, the Google Pixel, especially in terms of this video, the 8 Pro which I have, might not get the highest scores, it does feel quite a lot smoother than other Android devices that aren't quite as optimized. So using your phone on the daily is gonna feel a little bit better on the Pixel as opposed to something such as a Xiaomi. Though the Xiaomi is gonna be better in terms of raw performance when it comes to benchmarks and high demanding games. But with the Pixel, Pixel is kind of aimed toward those people who just wanna use a phone as a phone and they want the smart AI hardware and software built inside of their device and they don't really care much for high performance games. Xiaomi devices are more aimed toward those people who just want those raw numbers. Now Antutu version 10 has changed up quite a bit from version nine and you can't really compare version 10 to version nine, but they have added a couple things to be optimized more such as CPU and GPU, which is now based on Unreal Engine 4. Memory has now been split in between ROM and RAM to optimize ROM to improve test efficiency and RAM has now divided into bandwidth and latency to clearly demonstrate LPDDR performance. User experience has now been more compatible in terms of PDF document processing and they've added processing capabilities of large pixel images as well as decoding of H.265 and encoding of H.264 video files and they now simulate video editing as well which is actually a pretty big deal for mobile enthusiasts out there. Now wrapping up and 22 the Pixel 8 Pro was actually the coolest and added the least amount of temperature while the Xiaomi added the most and ended up the hottest. Jumping into Geekbench 5, I know what you guys are thinking. 
Geekbench 5 is a bit outdated and there's already Geekbench version 6, but I like still testing out phones with Geekbench 5 since the multi-cores are tested by multiple individual tasks, whereas Geekbench version 6 focuses on multi-cores tested by one workload and they use all of the cores together on one shared objective. So it is interesting to see the difference between scores, even though you can't really compare the scores between version 5 and version 6. But in terms of temperature at the end of Geekbench version 5, the iPhone 15 Pro Max was the coolest and it actually dropped in temperature, maybe a little bit of throttling going on there, whereas the Pixel 8 Pro added the most in terms of temp and the Xiaomi is still the hottest overall. Hopping into Geekbench version 6 now, there are a few new tests and new data sets to better measure performance such as background blur, photo filters, object detection for AI workloads, high resolution photo processing, bigger, more modern PDF processing as well. And like I said earlier, you can't compare version five to version six, but version six scores are a little bit higher and that's because it is a harder benchmark test to run through. And in terms of temperature, you can kind of see that since they all kind of went up here, except for the Xiaomi, which is clearly throttling here, dropping by almost five degrees in Celsius. The Samsung ended off the hottest here, the Pixel, the coolest, and the iPhone 15 Pro Max added the most in terms of gain. Now it's time to focus on GPU performance here using 3D Mark as a reference. Now I really wanted to test out Solar Bay, which is the new ray tracing benchmark within 3D Mark. But for some reason, the Vulkan functionalities are not present on the Pixel to be able to run the test, which is pretty strange since I've only seen this on budget range chipsets as of late. But nevertheless, we're gonna be testing out 3 Mark Wildlife Extreme, which is the same as regular wildlife, but it renders video at 4K, which is a lot more strenuous than the regular 2K resolution. And because the regular version usually caps out at about 60 FPS, it's easier to see the performance differences between these devices while rendering at 4K. And just a side note over here, iOS 17.1 wasn't available when I recorded this video. I did, however, run all the exact same benchmark tests and I'll leave the scores down below in the comment section. Just a spoiler though, the results are actually worse with the new software. And in terms of temperature after 3D Mark Wildlife, the Samsung was still the hottest, the Xiaomi added the most in terms of temperature gain, and the Pixel was still the coolest and actually dropped in terms of temperature. When it comes to temperature from start to finish, it's no surprise to see the Google Pixel 8 Pro be the coolest at the end and it added the least in terms of degrees Celsius, while the Samsung, surprisingly enough, ended off the hottest and added the most. The Pixel might not be the best performer here, but it's certainly the most efficient as we just saw with temperature and now with battery drain. It only dropped by 9% and it only got a milliamp hour per minute drain of 12.99, which is a hell of a lot better even when compared to the iPhones, which are usually the most optimized and efficient and quite a bit better than the other Android devices here. iPhones and Androids are finally on par in terms of scores when it comes to Antutu version 10 with the Galaxy S23 Ultra placing in first and the iPhone 15 Pro Max placing in second, which is honestly not that far behind it. Dead last here, we have the Google Pixel 8 Pro, which is not really surprising. Single core scores within Geekbench version five sees the two iPhones come in first and second place with the Pixel being dead last. The Pixel is once again last in multi-core performance within Geekbench version five, but this time the Xiaomi goes ahead of the S23 Ultra and once again, the iPhones place first and second. Things get interesting when we look at single core performance within Geekbench version six, where the Pixel actually overtook the Xiaomi over here. This is where the Xiaomi dropped in temperature quite a bit, which means it was throttling quite heavily. And its previous test almost reached 2000 within my review. So it's definitely throttling over here, something that Xiaomi is quite known for. Once again, the iPhones both placed first and second. Things are once again similar here in terms of multi-core performance within Geekbench version six with the iPhones coming first and second, the Pixel being fourth just behind that of the Samsung with the Xiaomi being dead last due to throttling. And when testing out GPU performance over here, the iPhone 15 Pro Max came in second place thanks to that new six core Apple GPU. However, the Samsung still beat it in first place here, though not quite far ahead of it. Third place was the iPhone 14 Pro Max here with fourth going toward the Xiaomi and fifth once again allocated toward the Pixel. So when you look at all of them side by side in terms of performance throughout this entire video, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is no doubt the clear winner over here with its predecessor not far behind that and the Samsung pretty much matching those two together. Again, the Pixel and Xiaomi didn't do the best, but in terms of the Pixel, you kind of expected it since they're going the AI route instead of the hardware route. But where the Pixel falls behind in hardware, it makes up 
in terms of software and AI optimizations, which is why it really surprised me to see it perform phenomenally well in terms of temperature and battery drain. And talking about battery drain, I will be posting a battery drain test soon, comparing all of these devices and a couple other devices as well. So stay tuned for that one. I'm also extremely excited to get my hands on a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 powered smartphone where I'll be doing this test again and testing it across all my other comparisons as well. So stay tuned for that one too. This is Technic and I'll catch you 